Nine years ago, my skin took a turn for the worst, and I broke out in severe cystic acne all over my body. My face, my chest, my back, my arms, my legs, and my booty. Just about anywhere you could have acne, I had it. I tried just about everything under the sun to heal my skin, but nothing really became clearer than when I started developing physical ailments in my body. That's when I knew that there was something else more severe going on. In a previous video, I have talked a little bit more in detail about the specific routines that I use to clear my skin, and I will link that video up above as well if you haven't seen it. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about the underlying root of the issue, because you can't just treat your skin on the surface. It always Always starts from inside so I'm gonna be sharing with you my personal journey some of the things that I did I have notes in front of me just because I don't want to forget anything how my journey changed much more when I focused on healing internally if you haven't seen my face before my name is Lakeisha and on this channel I post wellness beauty and lifestyle videos if that is something that you are interested in then make sure you are subscribed and without further ado let's get started The Physical Manifestation of Emotional Trauma The reason why I'm making this video is because I want other people to realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I wish that I had a video like this when I was going through my journey, so I'm going to be really raw and really honest with you guys. When I was in my teenage years, I never really broke out with acne at all. I was one of those people that were really blessed with very clear skin, so I never had any of that teenage acne. When I was in my early 20s, this is around 21, 22, is when I started to break out. Now, this was after or just about finishing university. So I realized that it wasn't caused by my university phase. It wasn't caused by that stress. It was everything that happened after and up until that point. Everything that I hadn't been addressing for so long for basically my entire life started seeping out of my skin. I really did not know what to do as someone who'd never dealt with acne before and especially as someone with a darker skin complexion. At the time, there wasn't that much information available online, just available in general, to treat darker, pigmented, more melanated skin. That wasn't sending me even further back down the hyperpigmentation route as well. Having this acne, present on my body, especially on my face, which is the first thing that people see when they look at you, was just another blow to my already feeling self confidence and self-worth. It was a downward spiral. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. The neighbor's dog is outside. I hope you can't hear the barking, but I really want to get this video done. <laughs> I just remember feeling at that time really ashamed and embarrassed of all of my insecurities basically showing up on my face. I tried countless methods to try to heal my skin from really crazy and dangerous DIYs that I concocted in my kitchen to just about every product that you could possibly get your hands on. I went to dermatologists, I went to doctors, I went to uh, estheticians, I went to every place that I could possibly get an answer for my acne. I was prescribed a lot of medication that I simply did not want to take because I felt like it would really damage my liver. And I already had like a, a knowing that there was something more to it. And I felt like if I didn't get down to the root of the cause of why my skin was breaking out, then no amount of medication damaging my liver would ever, you know, give me the clear skin that I desired right? It would just keep coming back, which it did. And I went through these cycles of when my skin would heal and cycles when it wouldn't heal. And it would just go on and on and on like that. And it went on like that for about five years or so. What I didn't realize at the time was that my acne was my body's way of signaling to me that there was something else going on, something much deeper. And that was unresolved trauma. Childhood trauma and emotional suppression. I grew up in a broken family, and as a little black girl in a black household, black Christian household, I had a very hard time processing my emotions. I did not understand what my emotions were, and throughout my upbringing, I was given the impression that emotions were things that black people didn't have just like mental illness was something that black people didn't have. You could just not deal with it. You can just sweep it under the rug and carry on. More out of a means of survival because you don't have the luxury of sitting down and 
sitting with your emotions when you have three jobs to work and you have bills to pay. That's emotional regulation seems like a luxury at that point. And it took me a really long time to understand that everything that my parents could not give to me or could not teach me were things that they weren't taught themselves. And that is where the whole generational trauma comes from. This emotional suppression that I was taught, you know, as a child, whenever things happen in my household, without understanding the language of emotional regulation and understanding how I was feeling and how to emote and communicate that, I felt as though I was encouraged to suppress all of those emotions because the adults around me couldn't handle their own emotions or did not know how to confront their own emo emotions themselves. So they couldn't give me the help that I needed. And in turn, I learned to suppress them. And I did that over and over and over again from the time I was a child to the time I was in university. Anytime that I ever brought up these feelings, I was met with a lot of pushback from the adults around me. And at the time, yeah, I didn't understand why. I do now, of course. This emotional suppression carried on during my young adult years. So this would be between the age of 17 and let's say 23. Um, 23 is the age when I first started, you know, understanding this language. I was introduced into a whole new world of dealing with your emotions. And I felt two things. Number one, I felt ashamed because all of these things seem to have been um, concepts that you were supposed to learn about as a child. So I felt incredibly behind as a 23 year old now going through how to deal with your emotions, how to understand, identify and process your emotions. You feel like that's something that you should learn as a five year old, right? And then number two, I felt really angry. I had a lot of anger inside of me at the time because I didn't understand why I was failed by the adults around me. So there's that shame, that embarrassment, and that anger that I carried with me, that resentment that started building up as well. But I knew that I did not want to be like the people that I saw around me. I wanted to move past that. I wanted to be better than that. I wanted to lead by example. And of course, I wanted clear skin. So all of these things were things I couldn't just sit with. And ignore and say that this is how it was because that was exactly what I was combating in my own family at the time. The skin is a beautiful organ. It allows us to do so many different things, but the way that the organ functions is that it is one of the first ways that we can see what is going on internally. Whenever there's dis-ease in your body, whenever there's emotional suppression, anger, whatever you're feeling in your body, it surfaces on your skin and gives you like a telltale sign of what actually you need to look at. We see this um, understanding across so many ancient practices, Chinese ancient medicine, uh, Indian healing, indigenous practices, as well as ancient African or Alkebulan practices as well. One of the biggest examples that come to my mind is Chinese face mapping, where you can look at your face and see, okay, if you're breaking out on your forehead, what is that related to? If you're breaking out on your jaw, that's more likely uh, hormonal. Wherever you're breaking out, it is a map to guide you to know exactly what you need to heal in your body. And so that was something that I really got interested in. But I'll talk about that a little bit more later. All of that to say is that everything that you're experiencing, whether it's hurt or anger or rejection or shame or even joy, good feelings as well, they are all reflected in your skin. And by understanding the language of our emotions and the language of our skin, we can combine them together and be able to heal ourselves from the inside out. And that brings us to part three, the turning point. I would love to say that I found the key to all of my issues by looking myself in the mirror and telling myself affirmations and overnight my skin was great. It didn't quite happen like that. When I was 23 years old, I found myself in a doctor's office because I had discovered a cyst in my chest. That's when I truly understood that something more was going on. At 23 years old, when I, I, even saying that out loud is like, wow, I can't believe that I was that person at 23. That's when I really understood that there was something more going on. You know, it wasn't just cysts in my face. They don't just stay there. I had cysts in my body developing. At such a young age, I was faced with the realization that if I continued down the path that I was going to, I probably wouldn't make it to 30. 
And that's when I truly understood that healing my skin really wasn't just about the rituals and the products that I was using. It was about healing the emotional scars beneath them. Healing practices that worked. If this is where you are, then that is amazing. You're at the point where you're making this realization, you're making those connections. But sometimes it's hard to figure out which healing methods work for you, how to address all of your emotions, how to address these feelings. It's great that you're acknowledging them, but what do you do from then on? Now, I am not a specialist, but I am someone who did it myself. So I'm going to share with you a few of the healing practices that worked for me, and hopefully they can help you too. The first was inner child work. Now, I'm sure you've heard this buzzword everywhere, but it is essentially confronting your past, acknowledging what you went through, acknowledging that it was a traumatic experience, no matter what level of traumatic it was. It was traumatic enough to create these systems, these patterns, these thought processes and habits to make you into the person that you are. And it's not really looking at that person who developed those behaviors, those defensive mechanisms that developed from a place of shame. It's about thinking that person, like that person at 23 who developed all these things and all these issues. If that 23 year old me wasn't there and didn't have those situations, those um, that health scare, then the 29 year old me would never be here. Confront that past, acknowledge what happened to you. Sometimes it helps by journaling or writing it out. Sitting with yourself and, and sitting with your emotions in a way that you're writing it out or journaling it out can really help you understand and process the things that you were not able to process as a child. Now with your adult brain, you can look at those situations and be like, oh, that was more traumatic than I thought it was. That was honestly one of the biggest things that hit me when I was going through my inner child work. Because as a child, suppressing your emotions and like just kind of ignoring everything that was going on around me, I never took in the magnitude of the situations and the experiences that I was exposed to. But as an adult now, looking back at it, I can be like, wow, that was a lot. And I can acknowledge now how strong I was and how resilient I was to deal with all of that and not crumble because of it. Number two, like we said, was the journaling. So this helps you with emotional release to release all of those emotions, to be able to verbalize what you felt, how you feel and what you experienced. As a child, journaling was never really my thing. I think it's because of the way that I was exposed to journaling. It was kind of like, dear diary, this is what's happening today. And I just never really felt like every day there was something positive to write and it would just be like a depressing journal. But um, as a child, I had a bunch of like books with like maybe one or two entries in them and the entire book was empty. What I ended up doing at that time was I wrote songs, I wrote music. If you're not a writer, if that's not how you emote, that is fine. There's so many other methods to understand your feelings, for example, example, music, like I said before, you can sing, you can write music, you can play instruments, drawing if you want to draw, create um, art, you know, that's, that's how the best artists make sense of their emotions through art and they can communicate that with other people. So choose a method that works for you. Number three is meditation. Meditation, once again, one of those really big buzzwords, especially nowadays in the wellness community, we're hearing everyone, you need to meditate, you need to meditate. Like, I'm not gonna kid you, like meditation was so daunting to me at the beginning of my practice. I just could never bring myself around to doing that. It just felt incredibly unnatural for me. So I do guided meditations most of the time. There's a whole bunch of meditations online that you can listen to when I'm in the bath because I have to be doing something. I'm a little bit uh, undiagnosed ADHD, I believe. I have to be doing something. So meditation doesn't necessarily have to begin that way. I would say build up to that. I think that sitting in stillness is a skill that is very, very important important that's why you know some of the most uh, powerful minds meditate right yes i would say that eventually you would need to build up to that but um you can do something as simple as putting on frequency music while you're studying right putting on frequency music while you're showering or you're washing your hair or you're cleaning the house doing something mundane putting it on just because that music that vibration that thought process that guided thought process is helping realign your your body, your energy centers, your chakras. That was a really great therapy for me as someone who came from a low income family, 
I couldn't really afford much of therapy. I think I went to maybe three or four therapy sessions as an adult. This was probably around 24, 25, but I couldn't afford continuing with it. So I had to find another method. At the very least, five sessions. I think at five sessions, it's kind of that um, you're given the tools that you need, you're given the verbiage that you need. And if you're not actually making progress, if you're not changing with the information that you've been given, you're kind of wasting your money, right? We almost crave distractions because we don't want to sit in the dark corners of our minds but it's super important to do so because in this reflection in this sitting with yourself that's how you acknowledge the things that have happened to you and that is how you get new ideas it is in boredom that we find creativity right it's in stillness that we find revelations and reflection the last healing method is one that admittedly was one of the hardest methods for me to carry out and that was creating boundaries and distancing myself from certain relationships that weren't helping me move forward and this includes friendships romantic relationships as well as familial relationships which that would be the hardest because all we know is the context of our family that's the primary lens through which we see the world so distancing yourself from people that aren't helping you move forward can be incredibly hard, especially when those people are your family. In black families, we are conditioned, we are raised to do anything and everything for the family. And no matter how your family treats you, there's nothing you can do about it, it's your family member. I don't quite agree with that philosophy. I believe that life is too short to stay tethered to someone who is hurting you. Life is too short to remain in a constant state of fear and trauma and walking on eggshells. And I know that not everyone watching this video would have the means to do so. For me, for a very long time, I did not have the means to do so. But when I did do that, it was the most rewarding thing I could have ever done. Now, I will be completely candid. When I did go no, no contact with my family, I went into a depressive state because I did not know who I was outside of my family. I mean, yes, at the university, you live away from your family, but no contact is different from moving away from your family. The first time I I tried a no contact and boundary method was when I was around 17. The second time I did at 27. It is incredibly hard, but staying around the people who are conducting themselves in a way that is destructive or um, non-conducive to a positive environment to your healing journey only condones that behavior and it actually does worse from that for that person that you would love to heal right that person that you love you know that saying that says if you love someone let them go and if they come back then you know it's really true or something like that <laughs> it's kind of the same thing when you remove yourself from that other person's life you give them the opportunity to miss you to feel that void of your presence and hopefully they can use that that distance that void to ask questions that they wouldn't have been asking if you were there if they knew that no matter what you would do you would never leave them they never have to grow up they never have to confront anything because it doesn't matter whether they do something or not of course it all depends on the person and you going no contact or creating these new boundaries and removing yourself from people that are not helping you it can never be for their benefit it's only for your own and really giving yourself the space that you need to heal Number five, internal transformation and skin healing. When I started confronting those suppressed emotions and my upbringing and the unfortunate circumstances that I was exposed to at a very young age, I started to let go of that anger and that resentment and that fear and that self-doubt and that self-loathing and all of that. And as I released that, I saw my skin clear. I mentioned before that there were periods in my life where I had like ups and downs when my skin would get clear and then it would go back. And thinking back and reflecting on it now, I think those times were when I truly felt happy. When you feel happy, it's reflected everywhere in your body. When you feel joy, when you feel love. For me, those situations, they kept 
turning and turning because I was still exposed to the same stimulus that I was before. So it would never go away at that point. But when I finally let go of all of that, I saw my skin clear and it was pretty dramatic. When I truly decided to let go of this trauma, those negative emotions that I was feeling and truly let myself be free regardless of what anyone was saying or what anyone around me was doing, that's when I truly felt like myself, the person that I had lost when I was like five years old, I felt that person again. And ever since then, there is like this invisible shield that's around me that just keeps me happy and bubbly. And um, for a very long time, I was such a people pleaser. So I would show everyone like I was happy and I was elegant and I was beautiful and I was performing for everyone around me. There were times, of course, when I was happy and I'm naturally an elegant person, <laughs> I think so. But um, a lot of it was performative. But when I let all of that go, it was genuine happiness. And now I'm at a point where there's very little things that upset me these days because I understand that anything that people say to me or do to me is a reflection of their own internal state. I always quote Meredith Grey from Grey's Anatomy. She said, hating someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. Think about that for a second. Carrying around anger and shame does nothing but deteriorate your body because that other person has no idea and they don't really care. If they did care, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing, but clearly they're either not aware or they don't care. This process of healing didn't happen overnight either. My process of healing began at 23 and I'm still doing it now and I'm 29. So it's not like one day you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm healed. No, <laughs> it's a process. Once you're aware of it, it's going to go on and on and you're going to discover new things about yourself that are going to keep popping up. And the first few ones may be really, really heavy because you've never done it before. It's something new to you. It's a skill that you're building on. But the more that you do it, it's actually fun <laughs> for me to confront um, things that I never understood before or I never had the time, the space or the chance to confront in the past. Every time I do something now, I'm like very analytical about it. I'm like, wow. Why did I do that? Where did that come from? Where in my childhood did this habit or this thought process develop? And it's kind of like a little game now because I'm trying to shape myself into the person that I want to be. And in order to do so, there are parts of myself that need to be laid to rest. Thanking that part of you for developing when you needed it to be secure and safe and to defend yourself in your survival mode, but also letting that part of you know that you are no longer in survival mode. And so they don't need to take the front seat. They can now sit in the back seat with you in the car. Healing is not and can never be solely surface level. There is no amount of facial, of baths, of um, massages that you can do that will heal your trauma from inside. It has to be mind, body, and soul. All three of them need to be healed together and in tandem. Because just as the mind is connected to the body, it's connected to the skin as well. I encourage you to explore your own emotional state. It's important to understand that none of the answers that you seek are outside of yourself. It's not going to be found in a doctor's office. It's not going to be found in a prescription bottle or an esthetician's chair. <laughs> it's not going to be found in your therapist. The answers that you seek are all inside of you. So turn inwards. Whew, that was a very long video. I feel so much lighter and I hope you do too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. While you're here, go ahead and watch some of my previous videos. Stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I'll see you lovely ladies and gents in my next one. Bye.